In this video, we are going to transform this piece of MDF into a functional dining table. Sit back and enjoy the video. The first step is to prime the surface and um, I'm using gesso uh, for this project and I like to use a roller, you could use a brush, but basically you want to get a smooth application of gesso um, and probably a couple of layers I would say, I ended up doing two layers and make sure you address those edges and get those primed as well. And you might wanna sand between the layers just to make sure your surface is smooth for the resin. Right, so we are now ready for resin. Um, this is a reminder for you to make sure you um, use your own discretion uh, when it comes to PPE when working with the resin. For this project, I am using Resin Cult and um, this is the art code and once again make sure you measure and mix your resin accurately so you don't get any soft spots in your project So now the colours I'm using for this project are mostly um, blues and teals um, and greens with a slight touch of an earthy element um, that I've gone for this bronzy brown colour and um, a few whites. Um, this is the requirement of this table and um, I, I've decided to go for a dirty pour for this just because I love the flow and movement of um, a dirty pour. So that's me making the cup. And I like to make um, the, the dirty pour one cup at a time, just so then I can see what colors are coming out of the cup and then I can make the next cup accordingly. If I want it to be darker or lighter, just helps me to do it this way rather than mixing all of them at the same time. And then I like to start with a line in the middle of the board going diagonal. So that will be my starting center point. And then it's just a case of building around it. And like I said, I'm gonna do a few darker pores, a few lighter pores, and then I can place them according to where I want more splash of color, where I want more subtle colors, I'm just able to gauge it better when I do it one at a time. Look at those gorgeous ribbons of resin. Feel free to use your fingers and your hands to sort of meld in bits, um, meld in colors, just to make them look like they have a flow and movement to the piece. Um, the other thing I also like to do is tilt the piece. Um, that way, again, it creates some natural movement to the piece. Then it's a case of just filling in the gaps. And I like to add another few wanes once all my board is covered with resin. Time for a quick torch to make sure you pop all the bubbles. I also like to use this um, air blower um, just to again soften some of those veins and lines. I will link all of the supplies in the description below. So I'm, I'm going to let this set for a couple of hours and then it is time to pull the tape. Now the perfect time to pull the tape depends on a lot of factors. It depends on your resin, it depends on the temperature of the room the humidity but basically you want to do it at a time when the resin is almost I would say 30% set but still flowing like really slowly um, that's when you want to pull the tape so you can have it come over the edge 
right now my resin is fully cured and what I like to do on my functional art pieces is to coat it with this product by Stone Coat Countertops. It is an anti-scratch um, finish and I've gone for a matte finish on this one. And this is a product that you apply with a roller, with a wet roller and then you go over with the dry roller to take off the excess product. If you'd like to see detailed videos of how this is applied, um, you can head over to RK3Designs or um, the YouTube channel of Stone Code Countertops. So as you can see, that is now giving it a lovely matte finish. This is now going to be durable, scratch resistant, heat resistant, and honestly, it looks like a piece of exotic stone. Let me know in the comments what you think of this table and make sure you like, subscribe and share for more of this content. And I will see you in the next video.